So today I'm going to do sketching sinusoidal functions with transformations. So we're out of the just sketch the sine theta, cos theta, and some little baby things. We're going to do the whole thing and we're going to graph them. So I'm going to go through three different examples. So I would suggest you watch all three because each one of them just a little bit different. And of course you want to know everything, don't you? Of course you do. So let's take a look at this lovely function here. Now, your textbook starts by asking you to state the transformations in the correct order. Now, we've gone over this before in grade 10 and probably back when we did just transformations of parent functions. And um, so the correct order just means that you do anything that involves multiplication and division before you do addition and subtraction. So basically, if you're looking at this equation, the negative, the 2, and the 3 are all multiplication or division type adjustments. So you're doing them in the correct order just by reading them from left to right. That's the easy part. So the first thing I want to do is look at the minus sign and you should know that means a reflection and we're reflecting the y value so that's reflection about the x-axis. And we already talked about what a negative sine function is going to look like. So that's the first thing you should put in your head, that this graph is going to start by going down. The second thing is that it has a 2 here. That means it's vertically stretched, I'm going to use a few short forms here, by a factor of 2. Factor of 2. What does the 3 mean? Well, remember, that was the period. So we could have little square brackets here. They don't put them in in the book, but I kind of like that because then you know that everything in here is a change to x. So it says 3, so that means that it's going to be a horizontal compression. Right? It's a compression. Compression by a factor of, ooh, running out of room, 1 over 3. Remember, it's not times, you divide by 3. Now the last two things are your shifts, so it's um, horizontally, horizontal shift, right, 45 degrees, and finally, vertical shift, down, five units. Okay, so that's in the correct order. So now to graph it, the first thing you want to do when you're graphing is you want to, let me find a nice pan, I think I'll do red. The first thing you want to do when you're graphing is you want to um, draw on the axis. So let's just do a quick sketch here of the sine function. So a sine function starts at 0, it goes to 1, it goes to 0, it goes to negative 1, it goes to 0. Right? So here's, here's your basic sine function. Sketch that in quickly. And there are five key points here. Where we started the graph, let's label them like A, B, C, D, so that you'll know what's happening here. A, B, C, D, E. So for the cosine, the, the sine function, remember it has three zeros and a maximum and a minimum. And you start on the axis. So let's go back to sketching this function. Now I'm going to draw on my axis at y equals negative 5. You could be doing this along with me if you just get yourself a piece of paper. Might be a good idea to practice it while we do it. So I'm going to label it y equals minus 5, and that's my axis. So remember, I'm going to have these three zeros on it when I'm done. And to the... Where'd my red pen go? To the axis, you're going to add and subtract the amplitude. Amplitude to give you your max and minimum values. So that's going to give you your range of the function, right? So I have minus five, I'm going to add two, and I'm going to subtract two. So good idea to do that with your pencil. 
just put a little dotted line up here so you know your graph isn't going to go above this line and it's not going to go below this one. So minus 5 minus 2 and minus 5 plus 2. So add and subtract the amplitude. Okay, so the next thing you want to know is where is this function going to start? Where will it start? Now you could do um, a mapping rule for each of these points. That's really tedious, but it could be done. And maybe in another, if, if your teacher does it that way, just let me know and I'll do another, um, another example showing you all the, the transformations or the mapping rules for the points. But this is the easy way, okay? The best way. So where does the graph start? X minus 45 degrees if I set this equal to zero, it tells me where the graph starts. So x minus 45 is equal to zero. So you should know that it's moved 45 degrees to the right. That's a transformation you should know, right? Horizontal shift, right, 45 degrees. So I want to begin my function at 45 degrees. So each of these is 30, so halfway in between. It's going to start right here. So that's my new A point. Now, what will B be? Without doing a lot of work, we can figure this out very easily. The fourth thing I want to know is, what is the period? What's the period? How long before this function does one complete cycle? So you know that the period is 360 degrees divided by K, and my K is 3. So that's 120 degrees. So if this is 120 degrees, you see this was 360 divided by 4 was 90. Notice how this goes 0, 90, 180, 270, 360. So I've added 90 to each one of these previous values to get the next point. So if I know this is 120, if I do 120 degrees divided by 4, that means that every point from here, which is at 45, is going to, I'm going to add 30 degrees to get to the next point. So let's go, let's write this like A, B, C, D, E. And to A, B, C, D, and E, I'm starting my A is 45 degrees. I determined that already. That's this part here, right? Where do I start? So add 30, 75. Add 30, 105. Add 30, 135. Add 30, 165 degrees. Okay, so let's double check now. We said the period was 120. We're starting at 45. 45 and 120 is 165. Okay, now make sure that you're going the right way because this is a negative sign. So I want you to think about the shape. So because it's a negative sine function, I'm going to make a quick sketch here. Negative sine goes this way, right? That's a negative sine theta function. So negative sine. So it's going to go down first. So I go back over here and I had 45, so where I started. Now I want to know where is 75. So each of these is 30, so 75 would be on this line, and that's going to be my lowest point. The next one has to be a zero. So 105, that's 15 from 90, that's going to be my zero. And then 105, so that's um, 30, this is 120, 105 is 15 plus, oh, we did the 105, well, 135. So 135 would be halfway, right? 135, that's here. And 165 is 180 minus 15. So it'd be like this. So here's my graph. Look at this. It's beautiful. There's one complete cycle. Now, if you wanted more points, you would just take your 165 and keep adding 30. So 195. 225, 255, 285, and 30 more, 315. 
So if I wanted to keep going with this graph, I would just keep moving this over. Too bad we couldn't cut and paste on here because it is just that easy. So 195, 225, that's in the middle here. 225, something like this. 225, 285, that's 15 past this one. Oops, 255. What did I do here? 195, 195, 225, 255. Let's just do a quick sketch here. It's going to go like this, right? And I'm going to be done at 315. This isn't exactly right on. It should be here, right? 315, 15 is 45 away from there. So you can do this and just take your time, fill it all in. So we had A, B, C, D, E. Just keep adding the 30 degrees because each point is going to be another 30 degrees away. Probably would have been easier to just go like one and a half, one and a half, one and a half, and so on. Okay, so if you have a better scale, it'd be easier to add those in. So let's try another function. Okay, we're doing a cosine function right now. Okay, so y equals minus 3 cos 1 half x plus 45 degrees plus 2. Can we state the transformations in the correct order? So transformations, we'll put them up here. Transformations, reflection about the x-axis. We have a vertical stretch by a factor of 3. right fast enough. A factor of three. Um, the half, what does a half mean? Well, remember you're dividing by half, so that's a horizontal, hope you said stretch, stretch by a factor two, because dividing by half is same as multiplying by two, and we have a horizontal shift left 45 degrees and a vertical shift up two units. Okay, there's all my transformations in the correct order. So we're going to do it the same way we did the other graph. We're going to start by finding the axis. So where's the axis? The axis is in bold number right at the very end of your equation. It says plus two, there's your axis. So you sketch on your axis. And then to your axis, and we're gonna make it go way out because I. it's a pretty good idea before you start sketching it to figure out what the period is going to be so that you have your scale proper. As well, because I know this is two, and the amplitude is 3. I add 3 and subtract 3 from that to get the maximum min values for my function. So 2 plus 3 is 5. So here I'm going to sketch that on here. And keep reminding yourself what kind of function you're dealing with. It's a negative cosine graph. So which way does negative cosine go? Um, 2 minus 3 is minus 1. So here's my my range would be from minus 1 to plus 5. Okay. Just about done here. Sorry, it's taking too much time. Okay, there we go. Now, we need to know where we're going to start this function. That's the first thing, right? Where are we going to start it? So here, this is x plus 45. We said we shifted to the left 45. So I want 45 degrees to the left. Now, cosine doesn't start on the axis, though, right? So where should this dot be for my beginning graph? It's not here. Um, let's just do a quick sketch of a cosine function. It goes like this, right? From 1, it ends at 1, minus 1 in the middle, zeros here. So it's going like this. That's y equals cos x. 
Okay, so but instead of starting at the highest point, it's going to start at the lowest point. So this is the A point. So let's let's label these again. A, B, C, D, E. So here's my new A. So this is, we'll call it AT, A for transformed. So we're going to start here. And I need to know what the period is. So I've got my 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 range here from minus one to five, but I need to know what the period is. So let's move this up a bit and we'll say, okay, the period is 360 degrees divided by one half, which is 360 times two or 720 degrees. And that's why I did my scale all the way up to here because I knew that's the way it was going to go. Okay, so if I want to find point B, Remember, point B is still one quarter, so it goes one quarter, a half, three quarters, one. So each one of these is one quarter of the way around your circle. So I take 720 degrees and I'm going to divide it by four to get 180 degrees. So 180 degrees is one quarter of the period. It's really good to know that. So because I'm starting here at, what do we say, minus 45. So I'm going to do minus 45 degrees plus 180 degrees. And that's going to give me the whereabouts of point B. Now it's a negative cosine function. So just a quick sketch over here. Negative cos goes like this, right? Starts here, ends here. So point A was 45, and point B is going to be minus 45 plus 180. I'm going to do that here just so I don't make a mistake. 135. Point C, add 180, that's going to be 215 degrees. No, it's not. 135 is 315 degrees. It's always good to use a calculator. And then um, point D is going to be 315 plus 180. That's going to be 495. And so we have 315, we added 180, and we got 495, and we add 180 again. And we're going to get 675. 675 degrees. So I'm starting here at the lowest point. So I have to end at the lowest point, way out here, 675. So this is uh, 630, 720. So that's 90 degrees. Each of these is 30. And so 630, 660. That would be 690, 675 is going to be right in the middle here. So right here. That's my end point. So this is my point E. Now right in the middle, which was point C, is at 315. So 315, that's going to be, this would be right here, right? 315. So that's going to be my highest point. And then I have to find the zeros. Zeros are going to be halfway between these. So we've already calculated them at 495. So that's 3, 450, 480, 495 on the axis. Oops, I didn't go up to the tallest one, did I? That's where this should have been up here. Forget that one. Okay, so and the other one is going to be at 135. So 90. 120, 135, that's my other zero on the axis. So the graph is going to go like this. It's going to go up to here. It's going to come back down. And it's going to end way down here. Okay, so you can see it's been vertically stretched, or horizontally stretched, sorry, by a factor of two. So it's twice as big. We moved it to the left 45 degrees. The amplitude is 3, so the domain, of course, would be real numbers, 
and the range would be between minus 1 and plus 5. Okay, I'm hoping this is starting to come together. We're going to do one more together. And maybe if you've got this figured out, you can turn it, like write this equation off, down, turn off the, um, turn off the computer and try it, and then come back and make sure that you've got it right. So this time I'm not going to list the transformations. I'm just going to start graphing it. So remember the first thing is your axis. So that's y equals 4. Sketch that on y equals 4, y equals 4. To that I'm going to add and subtract. So it gives me 6 and 2. So 6 and 2, though that's my, my range here. Let's uh, get this paper straight for you. So minus 2, that's as low as it's going to go. And plus 6 is as high as it's going to go. You need to know how to do these because it's important for the modeling questions we're going to do next. Okay, so where does the graph start? This says minus 30, so it's going to start at 30 degrees. It's a sine function, a positive sine function. So you have to think about which way is the sine function going to go. So you know a sine function positive goes this way, so it's going to go up. And those are going to be my, my key points here. One, two, three, four, five. Okay? So we're starting at plus 30. These are in 30s. That's really nice. And we start on the axis for a sine function. Now, what's the period? Period is 360 degrees divided by the K value. Here's K here. Divide by 2. So 180 degrees. So that means my whole graph has to be finished in 180 degrees. It's not going to be at 180 because I've already shifted at 30. So that means 180. What's 180 divided by 4? That's going to be, what, 45 degrees, right? Half of it would be 90 and half of 90 is 45. So I'm going to start at 30. So my new point A is going to be 30 degrees. My next value, point B, is going to be 75 degrees. C, add 45 to 75. That's 100 and... Ooh, I hate doing math. No, I don't. I love doing math. 120 degrees. And D, add 45, 165. And E, add 45. That's uh, 210 degrees. Does that make sense? 180, we start at 30, add 180, plus 30, 210. Good. Okay, so now all we have to do is find out where these points are. So this is going to be, this is a zero. Might be a good idea to write this out like this. Zero, 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 right? That means on the axis. Right, those are my axis points. So I have 30, I've got that one. 120, so that's going to be right here. And 210, it's a better scale this time, isn't it? And it's a positive sine function, so I'm going to go up, then I'm going to go down. So 75, that's going to be halfway between these two. And um, 75 is 15 from 90, I don't know, 75, 85, 90, yeah. But we are halfway between this one, 30 and 75. So I want 75 degrees. Oh, 30, 60, 75, right here. What am I thinking? Go up. So look, I'm going one and a half to get that one. And I'm going to one and a half to get the lowest one. And there's my lovely sine function. Now you could keep going one and a half. To the highest, one and a half to the zero, one and a half to the lowest, and one back to zero. So you could keep going. And there we go. So that makes sense. Look here, we're at 210, 210 degrees. We started at 30 degrees, period is 180, and there you go. Okay, so hopefully that helped you out. Um, you got to practice them 
and I would say maybe just go back and write down the equations of the ones that I've done. Make sure that you can do it yourself. Have a good day. Ask any questions. If there's something particular you want me to do for you, be more than happy.